We're back and we're continuing our look at the past 12 months of 2016. It's our Fight Network year in review show. John Pollock here with John Ramdean and Robin Black. We are going through all of our picks in the major categories and up next is submission of the year. And there were some dynamite ones mm -hmm. this particular year. I would say one of the most dramatic would be Misha Tate and coming back to submit Holly Holm in the fifth 100%. round to win the championship fight in a fight she was down on the scorecards in. That was really incredible. But for just sheer impressive nature, I go back to January early on this year and it was Ben Rothwell using his patented go-go choke and not so much just applying it, but who he did it to in Josh Barnett. First time in his pro MMA career he has ever had to submit in a fight. I think that added all the more impressive nature to this particular submission and really uh, set the year off on a really high note for Ben Roth while following up with a very similar submission over Matt Mitrione uh, before he took on Junior Del Santos. But that was my pick for submission of the year as we move on over to your pick, Mr. Randy. Yeah, one of the picks I had was um, jiu-jitsu ace Mackenzie Dern. If you've seen it, I think she was fighting for Legacy. Uh, the Omoplata that rear naked wild. choke, ridiculous. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and check that out. But it was the importance of this submission, taking a fight on short notice against the biggest star the organization has ever had, one of my favorite fighters, part of that scrap pack team, Nathan Diaz has the opportunity to take on Conor McGregor. I don't think uh, a whole lot of people gave him a chance of winning that fight. He gets the fight to the ground and he drowns Conor McGregor, gets the rear naked choke, and of course that uh, infamous post-fight uh, response to Joe Rogan. And this is how it all started going down. It wasn't just jiu-jitsu, it was MMA jiu-jitsu. You beat him up before you get the submission and I was freaking out. Yeah, yeah, it, it's beautiful really. Too, and the submission itself is a gorgeous thing. He punches him into the, the V of his elbow to get it. But it was the whole game. Understanding how to beat McGregor, knowing that he knew the way to beat him. That was very, very impressive. Understanding once you took him in a little deeper, maybe you could fatigue him, get him to question himself. That was an impressive, impressive submission. And whenever you see something so historic, you tend to remember where you were that night that that occurred. Uh, but in case John Ramdean did forget where he was, he was here in our office watching that submission along with Robin Black and members of our Fight Network crew. Yeah, <laughs> there's Robert in the back. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. And yeah. just so surprising, and we had so much fun. We have a great time here, man. When we're watching fights, it's such a great group of guys. And nobody loves fighting on the level of this group of people, which is why we share it with you, and I hope why you come and, and get it from us. Extra props for Matt Locke, who just runs in, <laughs> and the most emotion I've ever seen out of that individual in all the years I've worked with him as well. But Robin Black, your pick. Yeah, I agree with one of you. Actually, I agree with both of you guys. Those were fantastic. But there's one of them I had to break down. The other one I have broken down already, but let's break down that one right now. Nothing better than a beautiful submission. What's the sub of the year? Well, this one goes to Big Ben Rothwell. The submission itself is great, but the who is important. He did it to Josh Barnett, never been submitted before. What's the what? Did it with the go-go choke, that's the what. It's a choke and a larynx crush. Beautiful submission, but let's not fixate on the what. Let's look at the how and the why. Josh Barnett comes in looking for the single leg. Yeah, so where's he gonna put his head? Puts his head high and inside. High and inside is the place that Ben Rothwell develops the go-go choke from. How does he know that people will come in high and inside on him? He knows because BJ Penn. He knows because BJ Penn, Robin Black, WTF are you talking about? Well, I take you back to December 12, 2009, UFC 107, Diego Sanchez wrestling a ton, coming in low. Why? To avoid the guillotine, puts his head low. BJ starts experimenting in real time with this position, creating offense from this defensive position. He sees the vulnerable spaces and he's heuristically learning in this spot. He has 22 and a half minutes to keep working on this position and figuring it out. And yes, other fighters have worked from here, but in these 22 and a half minutes, there's tons to analyze as BJ works it out in real time. So fighters and coaches, of course, studied this performance. Then they optimized this offensive thinking on the fence. Guys like Greg Jackson taught it to people like Travis Brown who then perfected it. Hard hip turn. That's key. Hard overhook. The hip turn puts you in position to get a ton of leverage and angle. You're going low to avoid that guillotine. But in avoiding the guillotine, this was a safe position, but now 
it is an unsafe position as your head is targeted by the elbow. That's how the game adapts. Take something safe and make it unsafe. So the game is adapting that way. Now, to avoid this, you put your head up, where? High and inside. So Rothwell adapted his game to now target this position, take this safe position, and make it unsafe. How did he do that? By applying that go-go choke. This is an incredibly beautiful submission. It's part of the evolution of mixed martial arts. The game changes, baby. And this time, the game was changed by Big Ben Rothwell, and he gets our submission of the year.